And I am joined by Iowa State Representative Phyllis Seed, who represents the Quad Cities. And, um, you know, in light of the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis uh, while in police custody, there have been protests across the globe and even here in the Quad Cities, and it has all of us having conversations now about race relations. So um, we wanted to reach out to you um, to talk about several subjects in the Quad Cities. Um, but first, could you just give a little bit of background uh, on yourself? Oh, you bet, you bet. Uh, my, of course, my name is Phyllis Thede. I live here in Bettendorf, Iowa. And um, I'm married. I have three beautiful uh, daughters. And both my husband and I retired from the Davenport school system. Um, he was a teacher, and I was the secretary for over uh, 30 years, and he a teacher for over 30 years. Um, I became a legislator. Um, I won in 2008, starting the session in 2009, and I've been there ever since. And um, you also serve on some committees or have served yes. on some committees regarding yeah. minorities? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I actually, one of the commissions that I serve on is the Department of Human Rights. And that's interesting because I just had a, a Zoom call with them this morning and we were just talking about, each of the commissions talk about their specific um, culture. Um, it could be um, Asian, it could be, it's the black community, but specifically the African community. And they each report on some of the things that are happening in those communities. So it was a really good talk this morning. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. There are, like I said, lots of conversations going on right now. Yeah. With your background in education, though, I sure. wanted to talk a little bit about some of the disparities in education in the Quad City community that I think might surprise people. Um, right. The statistics come from the United Way. And yeah. one example uh, that they um, presented was that 43% of African American third graders were reading at grade level compared to 73% mm -hmm. of white third graders. What? And I find this alarming. And I just want to learn more about your observations in the education system and why that exists. Well, you know, it's, it's rather interesting. Um, those numbers, they're really true. Those are true numbers. And I, there are several things that I think that are happening with kids of color. Um, I think in the classroom, number one, they don't get the attention as their white counterpart. And what I mean by that is that if they are conversing in conversation, they're the last one to be called on. Oftentimes kids are quieter, kids of color are quieter. They don't always participate for fear, you know, of looking embarrassed or whatever, but there's no real connection with those kids in the classroom. Um, so I think part of it is that we need to do a better job, I think, and I think teachers work really hard, but I think there's something that we have to do better, and that is we need to engage kids of color, and we need to let them know that they are part of the educational system, and it's important that kids uh, participate in that. The other piece about this is that oftentimes we'll start to see a lot of our students um, go into, you know, special programming. I'm not sure if that's always needed. You know, I think a lot of times where we think that a child may need, needs to go into special ed, that may not be the case. It just, we need to just somehow engage that student a little bit more. And so I think that's kind of part of the problem that we see. And as you know, as growing older, most kids grow older, we do see a lot of those kids in a special ed program and they don't always need to be there. And then it can be harmful having that label as well. Absolutely, it can be. Absolutely, it can be. I think the other piece that we probably need to work on, too, is engaging the parents as well. That is the only way that we can make really a, a big difference. Parents need to know what rights they have as far as education comes, you know, comes to their children and what things that they should make sure that their children are part of. And so they can do that to make sure their child is getting the best educational experience that they can. Yes, parents can be definitely part of the solution and some teachers might say part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, you got it. I think there's a lot of room for growth for both sides. You know, I think 
it, with the George Floyd incident, I think it's now opened our eyes. We cannot go backwards. We have to, it's in full view. And so we now have to realize, okay, what am I doing to make things better? You know, or what haven't I been doing things to make things better? And certainly the schools have a great opportunity to make this better simply because they're around students of color on a daily basis. And so they have a great opportunity to engage, you know, and to, to, to make sure that these kids are shown in a positive light, you know. And you know, the other thing that I like mostly too is that, you know, when I was around, and even, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you, even with, as myself as a person of color, we often struggle as well. Um, you know, there's times there's biases and we need to remember, wait a minute, just because I'm African-American, I have a habit of looking at certain things. Okay, if they're, and I'll give you an example. So say like if somebody's in poverty, I assume because they're in poverty that they don't either have much or nobody's engaging with them or maybe parents aren't there. Now that's only part of the case. So, you know, I have to check myself when it comes to that as well. So I think it's very important that we make sure that we release those thoughts of any kind of bias and just accept that child as a child.